Transformation is an internationalization, globalization. We are connected as the world is increasing dramatically, and this trend will continue. The flow of people, goods, information, capital across borders becomes essential to the vitality and growth of societies. And with this exchange comes both a growing awareness of our common humanity, but also a heightened tension as the effects on employment, on resource demands, financial markets, and challenges to societal self-perceptions continue to be felt. The competition and the future collaborators for our development students today are not necessarily studying across town at Stadium or Wilson, or even in New York or Boston. They're studying in Shanghai, they're studying in Mumbai or Jakarta. Technological transformation. And I'm talking here about fundamental shifts in how people relate to one another, changes in how we generate, manage, store, and use information, advances in biological and medical sciences that will create tremendous ethical challenges around questions of when life begins, when it ends, and indeed how we even define what it is. Advances in other sciences that will continue to deepen our understanding of the universe and raise existential questions, which depending on how we deal with them will have fundamental implications for our understanding of what it means to be human, and how we express that understanding in our lives and in the society we construct. These will be quite literally questions of life and death. And then there are political and economic transformations. And you probably know there's a sort of cottage industry in the last few decades about studying societal collapses and how, how environments evolve and exploring the concept of diminishing returns on social complexity. I don't want to get too buzzword, but you know, obviously, as societies become more and more complex to try and solve the challenges in front of them, at a certain point, those added layers of complexity begin to give back less and less actual return. Um, so it makes societies less resilient to deal with complicated problems. I am still talking about the future, not current events, but uh, and I don't think it's very hard to see some of those challenges are, are realities. Anyway, continued and accelerated economic disparity, breakdowns in political discourse, fundamentalism across the ideological spectrum. These will continue to challenge us, if not worsen in the decades ahead. And we're all engaged in confronting uh, this sort of natural tendency of ordered systems towards disorder. The second law of thermodynamics, for those of you who emerged from uh, successfully from government <coughs> physics. So perhaps this is a pretty heavy topic for breakfast. Nevertheless, I don't apologize for it. The science fiction writer Robert Heinlein, who was no mean futurist himself, once wrote, uh, quote, one should not attend even the end of the world without a good breakfast first. <laughs> and I think that's very sound advice. So rather, I think, I think though, that this, this little trip through the future sets the stage well for what we're really here to participate in today, which is the work of building a development that is prepared for and answers these challenges. And do not by any means present a bleak future of unremitting challenge. It's easier, it's often more entertaining to spin out the dark sort of scenarios. Utopian visions of movies about uniforms don't usually do as well at the box offices as the end of the world sort of negative. But we must never lose sight of the fact that ours is a hopeful faith, rich with the promise of the ultimate victory we are assured of. And it is, and it must be, places like Bellarmine that give voice and body and expression to 